now I've got people, you know, as you mentioned, calling my world championship a secondary world championship. So now I'm out here trying to prove everybody wrong on that end. What up, everyone? Shaquille Mahjoudi here for CBS Sports, and you know who this is ahead of WWE SummerSlam in Detroit on Saturday and WWE's new collab with C4 Energy. I am joined by the reigning, defending, world heavyweight champion. He stomps on heads more than winemakers have stomped on grapes. Seth. Freaking Rollins. Ah, going, what a line. I like that. I like that. Hey, man. Stomps on heads more than winemaker style. You take credit for that. I like hey, that. Hey, royalty free. Throw it in a promo. I'd be Point honored. Sure. No <laughs> How's it going, Seth? It's How going doing, good. Man? How are you? I'm doing well. Um, Out here in, you know, the great Pamela Anderson's home of Vancouver, British Columbia. Oh, you're up in BC. Yes, nice, sir, man. Yes, what a lovely part of the world. Yes, really sir. lovely. Really lovely. Hey, this time of year, absolutely. But, you know, that's how people are here to talk about. They're here to talk about you, my guy. Um, and we have so much to get into. The world champ must be busy. So I want to get right into it. Now, uh, this kind of came to my attention recently, and I just have a billion questions, so I'd like to get it out of the way. Is there anything you could tell me about this sort of long lost season of NXT? The game show variety like oh wow there we are look yeah. at us man you. me and sandow and Big E and leo kruga who else is in that picture uh, there? we got xavier woods unico yeah Bo dallas did you ever did it get so far as like to have a pro selected for you no we never we, all we did was film like the um kind of like pre tape stuff like we filmed the packages we went to Full Sail University and kind of, you know, they had the camera set up and went around you and got, got all wet and shiny and did the poses and then like kind of talked about our who we were and where we came from and all that. So all that like pre-production type stuff, uh, we did all that and then they just, they never did the season. They never did it. I think we were supposed to be season maybe four or five. Hard to remember, but like they because they did the all female season, the one, then mm -hmm. they did maybe one after that, and we weren't on that. And then they were doing so maybe it was five, maybe it was five, but yeah, never came to fruition. Uh, for the better, I would say at the time, very disappointing. Obviously, we were all looking to get our feet wet in the WWE. We thought NXT was going to be the ticket, that, that pathway of NXT anyway. And uh, thankfully for all of us, that didn't happen because, uh, you know, here we are. Now I'm sitting talking to you, world heavyweight champion. It may not be the case had it had it been that way. So I would say my introduction was a, a little bit better than that. Yeah, you know, uh, it's one of those like fond memories fans have that maybe is best left in the past. If you could have had a pro by your side, who do you think you would have picked at that time in your career? Oh, man. Well, that would have been like 2011, maybe 2011, 2012. I mean, at that point in my career, um, Gosh, I, I mean, I would have been very closely aligned with CM Punk at the time, you know, that he would have probably been the guy if he was going to be involved with NXT, that uh, they would have paired with me based on our personality types and our upbringing. Wow, interesting. That'd be a crazy combination. Now, um, we have seen quite a number of evolutions of Seth Rollins, and it's brought us here to uh, the World Heavyweight Championship. I saw you, I think it was an interview with Ariel Helwani, kind of talk about a little bit of hesitancy at first, sort of like taking on this sort of eccentric sorry, blast from the past sort of persona. I'm wondering, now that it's become so sort of integral to this iteration of Seth Rollins, what's the biggest lesson you've learned about yourself and sort of having the willingness to sort of step out of your comfort zone and embrace something new and a little bit different? I mean, I think I learned a lot about how to take chances, uh, you know, and have a little bit more confidence in myself. I think uh, it's one of those things where I lived in my comfort zone for such a long time um, that I I thought I knew better. I thought I knew what I was that was comfortable in my identity. Um, and it, it was hard to look in the mirror and go, OK, this is working, but what can we do to go to the next level? And you know, kind of revamping your 
your whole presentation is a difficult choice to make. And so uh, you think, you know, it won't work. You think, you know, it'll fail. People won't like it. Uh, you won't be able to do it. Uh, all of these types of things. And sometimes you just got to dive in and see what happens and have confidence in your ability to make anything work. And if you are experienced and talented and committed and passionate, no matter what is given to you or no matter what you choose to do, you can find a way to make the absolute best of it. Now, it helps that all of this has kind of come from my my brain. These are mostly my ideas with the help of you know some folks that I um, whose opinions I, I care about. But at the end of the day, you know, all of the things that come out of Seth freaking Rollins are coming from from me. And so that helps me. But yeah, it was definitely a lesson in taking chances and understanding that sometimes in showbiz, that's what you got to do if you want to continue to evolve and stay relevant in, in a culture that's constantly changing and always looking for new, new, new. Do you remember what like sort of the nerves or the feelings were like the first time you were about to step out with this sort of new sort of over the top etc wardrobe? And when did you sort of click for you that like, oh, we're on to something here? Um, well, truth be told, you know, the the wardrobe and the character really had its beginnings during the pandemic. Um, so it would have been like early 2021, um, really, when it was when it was kind of taking its, ba its first baby steps. And so I didn't have the uh, I didn't have like the, the same trepidation that I would if I was in front of, you know, an entire you know, audience. It was just the television audience and then the computer screens at the Thunderdome. So there really wasn't as much, uh, like I said, as much trepidation as there might be when I fully stepped out. But when I really started to notice that what I was doing was hitting was really during um, my rivalry with Edge, because people really started to take notice of the colorful outfits. They started to make fun of them. They started to have fun with them. You know, I wore um, like an all silver bright aluminum foil looking suit uh, <laughs> on television one time and I got baked potato chance, you know? And so I mean, if you can get baked potato chance based on what you're wearing, I think you're, you're, you're on to something, you know, it took a while to kind of grasp it and hone it and figure it out. But yeah, it, it started to catch on. People started to wonder what kind of outlandish crap I was going to wear the next week and it caught fire you know uh you've multi you've described multiple times over the course of your career of having a chip on your shoulder and it's something you sort of use to invigorate you um you know as far back as the 2013 money in the bank tag team title match when you guys were put on the kickoff show you and roman against the usos by the way crazy to think 10 years later roman double champ seth rollins world champ the usos getting arguably the biggest win of their career it's amazing how time flies um and that chip has persisted to as recently as your match with matt riddle that was supposed to take place at SummerSlam last year um there was a period of time where it felt like seth was just sort of putting everyone elevating everyone around him right cody rhodes logan paul austin theory and i think this world title reign at least for me and some fans kind of felt like a long overdue reward, you know, Seth finally getting his chance to run with the strap. And even then, you know, with the way the title was introduced, I think it felt to some fans like a secondary prize. And I think that's a perception that's going to change with each and every title defense. But I was wondering, now that we're here at the pinnacle as world champion, do you still have a chip on your shoulder? What is that chip on the shoulder if it exists? Oh, there's always a chip on my shoulder, man. It never goes away. I'm never just coasting, you know. I'm never just just being okay with being okay, you know. It, if if it's not wanting to win a world championship or establish a world championship, now I've got people, you know, as you mentioned, calling my world championship a secondary world championship. So now I'm out here trying to prove everybody wrong on that end. And I'm not going to be naive and think that we ain't got a lot of work to do. Establishing a new title is difficult work. That it is a it is a hard job. Somebody's got to do it. And I am very honored to have the responsibility to be the guy to do that. And so there's always a chip on my shoulder. Anytime we go to any arena in the country uh, and anybody else gets credit 
for filling a house or, or being on top or mm. popping a rating or anything like that, I'm always going to feel slighted by it, you know, and not in a way that I'm jealous. I'm, I'm thrilled. Business is huge. We are the hottest ticket in town. Anywhere we go, we're sold out left and right. Houses are up. Ratings are up. It's crazy to be a part of WWE right now, but I'm always, always wanting to be the guy, always wanting to be the the marquee whatever it is that's where i want to be and if i feel like i'm not there i'm gonna be hustling i'm i'm a fine i'm like michael jordan man i'm f- i'm gonna find something you know what i mean i'm gonna find even if there's nothing even if everything's cooking cruising perfect i'm gonna go out and i'm gonna find something to piss me off i'm gonna find something that i can sink my teeth into i'm gonna make an any enemy out of somebody so that i got something to work for because that's just how i operate that's how i flow i don't know how to do it any other way Yes. Well, uh, I mean, I think it's evident even just by like the media obligations. I've seen you everywhere. You're here with me today, probably pounding back a C4 Energy WWE collab to help you get through it. Um, (laughs) But absolutely the constant professionals. We hit the back half here. I do want to do a really random segue. I am curious, you know, Uh, I brought up the stomp off the top of the interview. When you and your bro were sort of putting down Hulk Hogan and Ultimate Warrior Wrestling Buddies edition in the living room at eight years old, what was the first finishing move you guys came up with? Oh, man. I don't know that I ever invented my own finishing. Like the first finishing move I ever invented was probably the small package driver. But that wasn't until I was already wrestling. Other than that, when I was a kid, anything off the top rope was my cup, man. If I could find something to jump off of in my grandparents' living room, I was dropping an elbow. You know, I was macho man, hands in the air first, and then dropping the elbow every single time. A big super fly, super fly splash if I could. Anything like that. I, I was always one of the guys that wanted to jump off the top rope. Um, you know, I put out a Q&A before every interview I do, whether it's with a WWE superstar or a UFC super, uh, fighter. And the fans love to get involved in, you know, I I think there's a portion of the audience that's sort of really enamored with you and Becky. And I had a few people actually ask, you know, Becky did a recent interview where she sort of expressed that the one thing she was sort of hesitant about was Seth and Becky being put on screen as, you know, like as a couple, as characters, and that she wasn't super satisfied with the direction that took. She said that you've always been a lot more sort of laissez-faire or nonchalant about it. I was wondering, what is your sort of perspective on you and Becky sort of being brought together into storylines in the WWE? Well, you know, when when we do it, it's um, it's one of those things where, you know, we tried it uh, four years ago. Um, our characters were in totally different places at the time. Our mindsets, just as human beings, was in totally different places at the time. I was struggling i didn't know who i was on screen off screen uh i was going through a lot of self-doubt and depression um and so for me uh i i was just kind of letting it all fly hoping something would stick hoping i i could catch on to something and i thought it would be good for all people involved for her her character was in a different place she was in a different stratosphere and it was hard for her to manage uh what her character was um, on screen as the man, as, you know, this female badass Stone Cold Steve Austin type character. And then on the, on the flip side of that, having, you know, a husband and a love interest and all that. And, and so that, that kind of was hard for her to, to put together on screen. And, um, for me, you know, I'm always like, let's go with the flow. I'm not quite as, you know, protective as she is in that regard, probably to my own detriment in some cases. But um, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where when you when you take your relationship and you turn it into a story, it becomes difficult because it's hard for our audience occasionally to separate fiction from reality. And at the same time, our business is built on blending fiction and reality. And so that kind of um, those diametric forces that are sort of pulling and pushing all the time can create a bit of a struggle. And so it just didn't, we weren't ready for it. It didn't flush out. Our characters weren't in the right place. Our heads weren't in the right place. You know, if we did it now or uh, in the future, it might be different, but I'm also fortunate that it's not a thing that we need to go to. We're both just very strong individual characters and can carry stories individually on our own, which is, which is lovely. So if we go there again, I'd love to give it a second shot. I think there's a lot to it, but if we don't, 
we tried it, didn't work, and we're still very happily married. So that's yeah, good. Well, I think the Applebee and the uh, Joker commercials are a good sort of omen as to how those characters have sort of blended together. There you go. There you go. Um, one last thing on Becky, if it's all right. We don't have to talk about it, but I did have a lot of fans wondering, like, you know, you guys introduced a beautiful baby into the world. How has it been sort of managing parenthood and travel because you guys are no small parts of WWE programming. You're the show at a lot of, at a lot of stops. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, uh, it's, it's not been easy, but we have a ton of help. We're in a fortunate position where we get to take our baby on the road with us. We get to take her to all these towns. We get to fly with her. We get to travel with her. We get to experience different cities and different cultures with her. And, you know, in the past, that just hasn't been the case for parents on the road. They've got to leave their kids at home. They've got to, you know, they go on tour for 20 days and, and they don't get to see their kids' uh, birthdays. They don't get to see first words. They don't get to see first steps. They miss all that stuff. And and so we have just been so fortunate um, that we have the ability to bring her with, that we have a place. We have people to help out. We have, you know, it, it's just not everybody gets that opportunity. And so we don't take it for granted. You know, we know that it's hard and all of that stuff. But at the same time, there's so much joy that comes with having this little version of you around all the time and getting to experience everything with her is just super fulfilling. And I am thankful and humble that we get the opportunity to do that. She's honestly just the best. And she's made the last two years, like just a party on the road in a, in a, in a very, very like tame children's way. party. Yeah. A little, little baby party, you know, like with Moana and frozen, that kind of party. It's uh, that's gonna be one well well traveled, well cultured baby. So. Uh, oh yeah, she's got all. She's got our mileage program. She's gonna be sitting in the lounges when she's five years old. You know, <laughs> she's gonna have it all. I love it, Seth. We're running out of time here, so on the back quarter of this, I would love to just run you through a little bit of rapid fire, ask you some questions off the beaten path, if that's okay. Let's go. All right. Uh, we know that Seth Rollins is. Uh, you know, you described yourself as a coffee snob. I'm wondering, is there anyone in the WWE that can rival Seth Rollins' passion for a good cup of coffee? Um, maybe Chad Gable, actually. Okay. Chad Gable is another one who seeks out a, a snobbish cup of coffee. Uh, either him or Sami Zayn. Okay, I like that. Shout out to my fellow Canadian there. Uh, what is your favorite C4 WWE collab flavor? Ooh man, I don't know the name of it, but the other week, uh, it might not even be out yet. It was, it was like this, uh, it was this, it was a blue can. That's all I know. It was a blue can, uh, but it was super delicious. So I, but I have to, I have to warn you, man. There's a lot of caffeine in these bad boys. So I was only able to get through half of it because I'd already had my coffee early in the day, and that's just uh, that's the. They, I mean, they send you through the roof, baby. There's no, no, no lying about that. So yeah, there was this. There's a new blue flavor that's coming out. Either it's out or coming out very soon that we were able to do some media for. I wish I knew the name of it off the top of my head, but I'll, it was, I'll figure it out. I'll throw it up on the screen for you. Don't there worry. You you want to get jacked like Seth Rollins got that pre-workout in you um <laughs> okay you can erase you don't have to but you can erase one of your ultimate personas from history Jix or Taj the Destroyer which one are you get <laughs> uh I mean I'd probably go Taj the Destroyer if I had to choose one he was a very small it was a very tiny window I think I only wrestled like two matches as Taj the Destroyer Gix I spent some time with so, so I'll keep him around Okay. Uh, should Jay Uso be the one to dethrone Roman Reigns? If it ain't me, it's Jay Uso. Not of that. Okay. Uh, what video game makes you rage the hardest? Oh, anytime I play Madden online. If I'm playing Madden online, I'm ready to jump through the TV at these little pieces of junk. They all got they got their little cheat plays. You know, they got their little their motion men to block extra blockers. They got the whole thing set up. They got pass plays that you can't guard. They got it all. They got techniques, and I'm I'm. I, I don't go that far, man. No, That's it, too much. I feel you, man. It's hard being like a casual online sports gamer. It's it's it, brutal. Brutal. It's they, brutal. Need, they need like a rookie lobby, you know what? Just to kind of They like do. Play. They need a non hack lobby. Like, yeah. let me just pick a random play and let's go. You know, I don't need this I don't need all this chaos in here. I don't need you gaming the game. Let's just have some fun. Yeah, thank you. All right, last one. Um, this is for a diehard who was watching your WW24 episode. Uh, you went to a basketball training camp after high school before actually making the jump into pro wrestling. What sort of compelled you to go that route instead of just jumping straight into a wrestling school? Oh, man. So I did. The, the timeline of it is funky, right? I was 
playing uh, sports and I was pretty decent in basketball up until I was about 14. Uh, I did a camp in the summer and it was about 14 where I kind of just started to fall out of love with team sports, especially when you start to get into high school and college level, the politics of it um, become a little anybody who's ever been in that world become uh, they become a little more obvious to you when you're a kid you're just playing sports to have fun you don't really notice that but the minute you kind of start getting into team sports where there's a little bit of money involved now you're getting closer to college all of this there's a there's a lot of politics the parents get more involved and like i just i wasn't into that and i was having way more fun um watching wrestling, pursuing wrestling. I like the individual aspect of it. Uh, I liked that it felt like I was the one, like the more work I put in, it just felt like more of a meritocracy to me. So like at, at 14 or 15, that's really when I was like, this is, I'm just going to put all my, all my eggs in this basket. If it doesn't work out, then we'll figure something out on the back end, but I'm going to do four years of high school. I'm just going to work in all the ways I can to, kind of put myself in position to be a great pro wrestler, whatever that means and uh, hope for the best. And, you know, here we are. So (laughs) things are good. From your dad's backyard promotion to wrestling AJ Styles at 19, dodging a bullet with that lost season of of NXT. And here we are as the world champion. Seth, you've been so gracious with your time. I want to leave you with the last words. I'll do my part very quickly, guys. Thanks so much for checking out the video. If you're still here, please subscribe, tap the bell, thumbs up, let us know what is your official prediction for the SummerSlam card that takes place in Ford Field in Detroit on Saturday. Check out the new WWE C4 collabs. Seth, if there's anything you want to let the people know, the floor is yours, my man. Just a big thank you, man. Keep singing my song in every city and all the streets all over the world, man. It's a big party out there and I'm riding the wave. Let's go.